the deep sea is my jam. I did my PhD in a group that specialized in deep sea microbiology, even though my PhD was not about that. All the people around me were working with that and I find it infinitely fascinating. I always love learning about the deep sea. I love deep sea creatures. It's fascinating. So of course, I just can't not watch this video. I'm also looking forward to having fun because his videos are usually very fun. You've probably heard me say that I'd rather eat 10 pounds of Popeye's biscuits with no drink than ever go out into the ocean. <laughs> well, I'd hard to disagree already. Why? I'd rather ride cross country on a bike with a hot grill for a seat than spend half a second in the deep sea. There's a lot of living nightmares and paralysis demons come to life if you sink deep enough. And the Megalodon is not one of them. You'll often hear this thing about how the prehistoric apex predator never got discontinued, it's just chilling a step above hell in the abyss. This is Cap for two, well actually three good reasons. One, there just right. isn't enough food to sustain a 60 foot you to the natural order. Yes, two, if nature did keep this. the same jumbo jaws that peaked in the Pliocene, we at least would have seen a body by now. Yeah. And number three. And they would live at the surface, not at the bottom. If there were a shark species living in the deep that had maybe evolved from megalodons, it would not be a megalodon anymore because their body is just not made to live in the deep. They are surface dwelling sharks or they were surface dwelling sharks were the key word here. <laughs> Why do y'all want this to be alive so bad? I promise you there's way worse things down there. Right? Like, I would evacuate my bowels if I ever saw a giga great white shark. <laughs> I, in my mag reaction video, I get a lot of people angry at me when I say that the megalodon does not exist. Why do you people want it to exist? Isn't the great white cool enough for you? Because I think it's it's pretty cool. This is the big Put fin me in front of a squid. T squid and I'm shitting more bricks than the entire city Love of it. New York. The big fin squid yes. is easily one of the most disturbing things alive as I'm saying this. Come on. It's a deep ocean Come on, predator Cavill. with arms estimated to max out at just under 30 feet. Scientists What's believe 30 the big feet. Fin I don't know what 30 feet is. I think it's like they're pretty long. I know they're like eight meters or ten meters. I think they have super long tentacles. It's crazy, but not much is known about these. Dragging those arms, which can be easily 20 times its own body length along the ocean floor like trawling nets and feeding on whatever poor soul accidentally bumps into them. You're gonna hear me say believe or we think a lot, and that's because we don't know a whole lot about them. Almost every sighting and virtually every This is so important. Those are two key words and very important. There's a difference in saying we think or we believe things are like that and saying they are like that, right? So in science or in marine science, it, any science really, these two words are key. I like that, he mentioned that. Specimens studied were either juveniles or paralarva. We have no way of knowing exactly what their final form could look like. For all we know, this could it's be junior, and we just haven't seen mama bad fin yet. Who would have thought that just putting it's not elbows gonna, on a squid would instantly turn into the spawn of Satan? Oh, and if you thought the big fin was just this slow, passive floating predator, then you're seriously underestimating the ocean's ability to massacre your mental health. And if you're curious, this video was taken about 7,000 feet down in the Gulf of Mexico. But considering they're believed to be the deepest living squids at about 20,000 feet, oh, I, didn't know that. I have a theory. This is a juvenile, and the big boys are the ones shacking it up down in the crotch of the ocean. We don't know that, all right? This is his theory. We do not know that. And please do not be afraid of going into the ocean because of these things that we never see. And even like squids that occasionally appear at the surface, like the giant squids, they're usually not in really good shape when they surface. There are some squids that you should be more careful with, like humble squids. They are a bit smaller, considerably smaller than giant squids, but they're a bit more aggressive. But for your peace of mind, most of the attacks on humans by these squids were against deep sea divers, and they were never fatal. Maybe he talks about more squids here. I don't know. News, this is a long video. The big probably only feeds on small fish and crustaceans. Stop interrupting. Bad news: there are squids big enough to beef with the biggest predators on the planet, and the biggest predator on sperm the planet whales? that isn't a disgraced former YouTuber is the sperm <laughs> whale, which on its own would have to be one of the most traumatizing things to witness during their two-hour hunting expeditions down in the deep sea. All right, so a little tangent here. Sperm whales usually earn the title of the best marine mammal divers, but I think the crown belongs to someone else. The longest and deepest dive record is held by a Cuvier's beaked whale that was recorded diving down to 3,000 meters deep and diving for almost four hours without coming to the surface. Well, the tankiest carnivore on Earth regularly runs fades with the giant squid. And by giant, we're talking about calamari growing to an estimated 40 feet long. Not only are they themselves predators that hunt using 20 foot tentacles. Uh, yeah, see, th this squid doesn't look too good. This this footage was probably captured close to the surface. It doesn't look like it's doing too well. Otherwise, it would probably not come so close to the surface. Two cannibals that would 100% murk their entire family reunion for some calories. 
Now, Nature high key screwed up their character design. They have a donut shaped brain and an esophagus running through it, meaning if they swallow something big enough, not only do That's they run the risk crazy. of choking to a flat line, they can also factory reset their entire personality through severe brain damage. That beak is such a weapon that you'll rarely see a sperm whale that hasn't been tattooed during a struggle with a giant squid. There actually isn't any footage of giant squids fighting sperm whales. We know that sperm whales eat giant squids, but everything we know about them fighting back is mostly due to squid tentacle marks on sperm whales. And while the plus size cephalopod usually loses in a war with the whale, they do not make it easy. But the most disturbing thing about them is that eye. No, Giant squids their have eyes are so cute. Look, it's so cute. I love their big eyes. The most physically imposing eye that in nature, is true, with it being they are roughly so the size cute. of a soccer ball. Contrary to popular oh, belief, squid. huge That's eyes don't exactly squid, help it see further, squid. but it does mean they're terrifyingly good at noticing objects giving off Seriously, their I'm own gonna light, stop talking. which is a lifesaver he says since when their I'm biggest octa about. sperm whale is on the hunt, modern day leviathan disturbs glowing creatures like jellyfish and crustaceans who flash in response. Having eyes as big as our heads means the giant squid can detect and use those flashes to avoid becoming a course. There's another squid with hunting tactics so spiritually upsetting, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and use a lifeline. The oh, Nicole! Squid, also known I as love the her. Devil. I love her channel, Lindsay, too. By the way. Hi. Humboldt squid are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Subscribe to both of them. To They're really funny. Both of them. Surface of the ocean. And their nickname comes from the way they use their pigment cells called <gasps> chromatophores to communicate. You're probably familiar with chromatophores through videos of different cephalopods using them to change yes. color, blending into their surroundings, yeah, awesome. and even dreaming. And Humboldt squid notably use them to- Chromatophores are neurally controlled organs filled with ink that can expand and contract. By selectively expanding and retracting distinct groups of chromatophores, cephalopods can display a myriad of patterns and colors across their body. Especially flamboyant squids, as the name indicates, they use their colors and their chromatophores quite flamboyantly. They use it to try to scare away predators, to camouflage, as she says, also for mating strategies. Cephalopods are probably one of my favorite groups of animals, especially octopuses. I love them. They're so, so cool. To turn bright red when they're aggravated, hence the nickname Red Devil. Humboldt very on brand. Didn't they're I say they were talking about Humboldt squid? And have been known to act aggressively towards scuba divers on rare occasion, which becomes a bit more terrifying when I tell you that they can get to eight feet long and 100 pounds. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, that is not yeah, that. And sometimes big. they the travel in groups. The colossal squid that can both get to like 40 feet long. What? I haven't told you the best part yet. The Humboldt squid is known to live and hunt in groups of up to 10, no, up to 100? Gonna shut up. A thousand? Yes. In groups of over a thousand. A thousand? thousand? Okay, that I didn't know. What? I knew humble squids can hunt in groups, but I didn't know those groups could consist of a thousand individuals. That's insane. And a lot of that's because of this cute little thing known as deep sea gigantism. The idea that the cold temperature, the dissolved oxygen, and the lack of pressure from predators allow some animals to escalate to the biggest and most terrifying yeah, I was, of What is this? Exhibit A, the this Japanese spider Love crab, them. which can measure 12 feet across from claw to claw. Deep sea gigantism is a phenomenon which is not 100% understood. Another factor that he did mention that might also be a reason for why creatures in the deep might be bigger than their counterparts at the surface is actually the lack of food, which sounds counterintuitive because larger animals need more food to survive. Being bigger might also be an adaptation to food patchiness. A larger body size can improve the ability to forage for widely scattered resources and also has more reserves. For example, giant isopods can eat so much that it impairs their ability to move. But then, at least in captivity, they can survive for five years without eating. And that's only because they have enough reserves in their large body. Claw and weigh as much as a human toddler. Only thing worse than a giant spider crab is a giant crab spider. This is an it's Antarctic sea spider, a, spider. a dinner plate sized demon spawn that hunts by sucking the life like out of its it, prey through its but proboscis. It really is. Now, technically, they're not actual spiders. But also, I imagine most people watching technically don't get it, especially since this one looks like it identifies <laughs> as a face true. hugger. Then there's a giant isopod, oh. which is essentially an aquatic cockroach big enough to be cradled like a baby. No clue why you would, though. And if you're looking for a <gasps> truly supersized animal crossing, the orfish should be on your orfish. list. The giant orfish can grow to well over 30 feet long, they and there are have even been claims of those in the neighborhood of 50 feet. Proof that back in the day when we had stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying, they just didn't so have all the beautiful. names yet. Also, Look if you caught that pun earlier, we're friends now. <laughs> but with deep sea gigantism and that 
Fun fact, I am writing a kid's book series in which the main characters are deep sea animals. The first one is already out. See, he's a beautiful Dumbo octopus. Cute, see? Not all of them look terrifying. This is a very cute animal. But actually, in the second book, the main character is a oarfish. It's not out yet. It's in production. The endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for Shaitan. Hydrothermal vents. If you dive deep enough, there be monsters. For example, that's this. a siphonophore. This isn't an animal. It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive mind. So we're not talking about it. We're talking it's about a them. Colony. And siphonophores like this come in many forms, like the Portuguese man of war. The Portuguese man of war is probably one of the siphonophores you should stay away from. Not the only one. Many siphonophore species, including the Portuguese man of war, have nematocysts. These are little cells with a pneumatic needle that reacts to external stimuli, injecting venom into the victims. Depending on the species, their sting can be really painful to humans and in some specific cases, lethal. But the good news is that neither of them will actively chase you, so just don't touch them and you'll be fine. The experience of meeting one is permanently etched into your brain. And there's a Priodubia, a giant siphonophore that can flex a total length of up to 160 the feet. The longest And even though it's animal, a collective group of tiny it's animals, its animals. length okay. could humble a blue whale, making it technically the longest creature on the planet. Or at best, a modest second, since the bootlace ribbon worm has been reported to reach 180 feet in length. And it's toxic because I the ocean, this. and of course it is, with <laughs> nasty smelling mucus potent enough to life deprive the crabs it has to eat. Like I said, I whether it's that. Lucifer's cave worm something. or a flying spaghetti creature, there be monsters. That and it gets monsters. so much worse than a giant worm. Because that's terrifying right, as it so seems. So I understand he knows they are not monsters. But there is a negative association to the word monster. That's why I don't like using the word monster for any marine creature that actually exists. Because they're just animals. <laughs> it's not their fault that they were born looking ugly. <laughs> Some of them. He is. It's also nasty. nasty. And there might not be anything more <laughs> repulsive than the hagfish. This loogie linguini feeds on the rotting corpses yeah. and carcasses that sink down into its domain. And since they don't have any yeah, actual teeth, the graveyard guppy mm -hmm. feeds by sliding into an opening and eating the decomposing body from the inside yeah. out. And you would think that something that eats like a casket wouldn't have to worry about getting put on a plate itself. Now, you've definitely seen this picture before, I but have you ever stopped and asked yourself what they were doing there in the first place? You remember how I said nothing that eats like a hagfish should ever have to worry about getting eaten? Well, simple. For these hagfish, their final destination of course. were dinner plates of in course. Asian countries such as Humans South Korea, where they're considered a delicacy. Okay. Now, I'm not one to judge other cultures, but we seem to have a habit of constantly trying to eat all the things nature went out of its way to tell us not to. But one thing you won't see as a main course is something ironically named after a fruit. The sea cucumber is uh, like the hagfish in that oh, it's meal I've prep consists of all the things I've actually seen we... this exact species in Indonesia. It was huge. You normally flush, burn, or bury. All the soul evacuated bodies that sink down to the ocean floor instantly get put on the cucumbers grocery yeah, they're list. Like... It's a literal bottom feeder, and I mean that since they'll also make a meal yeah, out they're, of feces. They clean the but like with vultures, if Thanos really had beef with sea cucumbers, the world would become an infinitely more disgusting True. place. That's not the only way sea cucumbers contribute to society. They're also often used as a protective bunker for oh, fish, and well, I know. let's just say they break in through the back door. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a violation of the highest yeah. natural order. It gets worse when a pearl fish decides to have a play date right next to its prostate. I don't even know if they have a prostate, but you get it. No, they don't. Sea cucumbers have a relatively simple anatomy. Their reproductive system consists only of a single gonad where either the eggs or the sperm, depending on whether it's a male or female, are produced and stored. So yeah, no prostate. However, even though it looks like something Lucifer would use to pleasure himself, they eat mostly zooplankton and are pretty much harmless for the most part. And honestly, that pretty much describes 80% of the nonsense in the deep sea, only really harmful to your peace of yeah. mind. Like take the frill shark. Exactly. Having been around for 80 something million years, not only is the frill shark a living <laughs> fossil, it's likely nature's rough draft beta version of sharks today. Also, don't let this beta video fool you. They can grow to a respectable <laughs> six feet long. Also, they can be pregnant for three and a half years, which honestly makes about as much sense as everything else down there. And three in terms and of your mental years? health, the frill shark. Is that the longest an animal can be pregnant for? Let me check this. I thought the longest pregnancy was like two years. Elephants, 18 to 22 months. That's uh, less than two years. So it turns out that the frill shark indeed has the longest recorded gestation period in the animal kingdom. This might be due to them living in colder waters because colder temperatures tend to slow down the metabolism of cold-blooded animals and potentially also their development. This is fascinating. I did not know this. Yeah, three years. Holy cow. Then you have the ghost shark, which, okay, oh, yeah, you got me. It's a, a natural shark. It's a close cousin known as a chimera. 
The, the ghost part though, uh, that's on brand. They kind of remind me of the dry bones fish from Mario. The ghost nada shark doesn't even have the teeth you'd expect it to have, but instead they have plates that they use to grind up food. But since nature's constantly overcompensating, chimeras do have venomous spines that are harmful to more than just your mental well-being. But by far the weirdest thing about them, chimeras have a tenaculum on their forehead. A tenaculum is a reproductive organ, meaning this fish has a... <laughs> yeah, on his forehead. Venom and... That aside, this fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream is actually pretty cool looking. I think so. I'm just gonna say, it's really I think cute. they're cute. And I'm perfectly fine with standing on that hill alone. However, You're not alone. I'll stand on that hill with you. They are really cute. They are related to sharks. There are two types of fishes, the cartilaginous fish and the bony fish. Sharks, chimeras, skates, and rays belong to the class chondrichtes. The chondrichtes include two subclasses, the elasmobranchi, which include sharks, rays, skates, and shawfish and the olocephaly, which are the chimeras. The ones I just mentioned are the cartilaginous fish because instead of bones, they have cartilage. For example, our ears are made of cartilage. That is what these fish's skeletons are made of. And they look really cute. And there is one appearing in my second book, by the way. So, and you're gonna find pretty metal. the creatures rolling in a deep have evolved some of the most creative ways of bagging groceries. Probably the most popular is the fish that nearly turned Nemo into an orphan. The anglerfish has two- the, Okay, there's one fun fact, which is not fun at all, which is probably the weirdest ocean fact ever, at least for me. So I'm pretty sure they they will talk about it, because uh, they, I'm sure they will. So I will let them explain, because they probably do it better than me, and, and funnier than me. One of them is that fishing lure hanging right in front of those life-canceling jaws. That light actually comes from bioluminescent bacteria shacking up inside a modified fin. So when a bite-sized light work swims up to the light thing and it just cops some easy protein, the angler ensures that some fish out there never sees its father again. The other thing anglerfish got clout for is their mating habits. I'm not gonna get into it, just know that if your marriage looks anything like theirs, you're gonna need both a divorce and a restraining order. And you know what? Intensive therapy on top of that. Expert friggin' dishes. <laughs> Nemo's paralysis demon okay. is- All right, okay, they actually didn't talk about it. I will explain. The big anglerfish that you saw here were all females. The males are much, much, much smaller than the females. And because it, they live in the deep sea and it's really uncommon for males and females to find each other, when a male finds a female, it will latch onto it like a parasite. That's why they are actually called sexual parasites. And if they stick there long enough, which they usually do, their body will slowly be consumed by the female's body until only the testes are left. So the organs slowly fuse and mesh with the females. I can't even... And to make things worse, one female can have several males attached to her. So... And I'm a biologist. I don't know. Like, why? It's both fascinating and so weird. That's the entire playbook for the deep sea lizard fish. Just look at that smile. You know he's on nefarious timing. And that that is something of nightmares, I will admit. That one particular shot, not the animal itself, and it's, but like this particular shot. <laughs> I mean. Look at that smile. You know he's on nefarious timing. And at over two feet long, they earned the title no. of being one of the premier apex predators of the deep sea. As a habitual camper, they lie waiting for life to pass them by before they lunge and use hypodermic needles for teeth to cancel it. <laughs> and with it. apex standing for anyone providing smoke gets extinguished, lizardfish don't hesitate to turn their own kind into coffin fodder. And with the whole point of those teeth being to hold struggling, panicking prey in place, they make sure they don't live long enough to learn from their mistake. But as much of a therapy build as Gecko Guppy's mugshot might That's be, really it might not even be the worst headshot in the ocean. Oh. Not as oh, long yeah. as this is still <laughs> no. a factor. I don't know. <laughs> It looks like the clownish, goofy character in a kid's movie who tries to be mean and isn't. I don't know. I'm imagining a whole personality for this dude right now because, <laughs> I don't know, I think it looks kind of cute. <laughs> no, Somehow, anyone who would know. waste the oxygen trying to defend this. I would. I Many did. say this is a face only a mother could love. Well, then maybe he is my son. This <laughs> is mine. the deep sea telescope fish, one of the most stunning creatures of the deep tropical <laughs> oceans. They're found at depths of about yeah, 1,600 to 6,600 feet below the They're surface really cool. of the ocean. I can't say that normally. Surface of the ocean. And like you'll see if you look up photos of them online, they are often photographed at unfortunate angles that don't do them 
any justice. I never they saw They orient that. themselves upwards, hanging out vertically in the water column, as they use their specially adapted oh, eyes that. for the silhouettes of their prey. There are two species of telescope fish, Gigantera indica and Gigantera chuni. Don't be fooled by their oh, genus, which makes them sound like they're gigantic. That is not the case at all. Indica only gets to about eight inches long, and chuni a measly six. They are just little guys. Yeah, I'm sure if we gave it Blistex and a hairline restoration surgery, he'd be cute, but that's just me. That being said, there's a lot of pretty dope things just chilling in the deep. Yeah. Take the barrel like fish. The, barrel the fish like with this. a transparent head that means it can spot ops or prey directly above it. Those Thanks to those two green gummy looking orbs that are actually eyes. its eyes. Or the ultra rare giant phantom jelly Is he gonna fish, show equipped with 30 foot arms that makes this ET understudy the, the length octopus, of a whale shark. The cutest and when thing I say rare, I mean this jelly's only been seen like a like hundred times in the history of mankind. So the fact that you're watching this right now is kind of wild. So then you have the deep sea Dumbo octopus that copes with stress by turning itself into a ball to discourage predators from eating it. And if this right here looks familiar, yeah, right to his thighs. It's actually real, and those arts and crafts looking eyes help it catch prey on a nocturnal schedule. Looks like it's also important as an environmental indicator, since scientists will often study their responses to changes in yeah. water pH and use that to determine Bobtail how- Bobtail squids are so cute. You'll have to search Bobtail squid hiding itself. When they feel threatened, they cover themselves with stones, and it's so cute the way they do it. You'll just check it out online. You'll, I'm sure you'll find a video of them just doing like, it's so cute. <laughs> to the water is oh. around them, which you would think would earn this anime octopus the respect of the scientific community. Well, you'd be wrong. There's a video where some scientists found one, and let me just say, not even Hiroshima got roasted that hard. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and drink I water, saw that video. hug your moms, go subscribe to Lindsay's channel, link will be in the description. Shout out to Lindsay for being in this video, and I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Thank you, Casual Geographic. Oh, props to Casual Geographic and Nicole for making a really great video. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I learned some new things that I didn't know, actually. As you saw, they are really funny. I will leave both of their channels linked down below. They're also on TikTok. That's actually where I found them first. I only recently found out they also have YouTube channels. So go check them out. They're really funny and you'll uh, learn a lot. But please don't let these beautiful animals and creatures be the reason why you don't go to the ocean. Because the ocean is awesome and the chances that you will ever meet any of those animals is close to non-existence. It's not 0% because they are in the ocean, but it's really close to zero. Thank you to all my patrons if you want to support what I do here on the channel. Check out my Patreon and my affiliate links, everything down below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!